31 Ways to Mob Proof Your Minecraft Base Playing in survival mode can be a ton of fun, but when night falls, chances are you'll have to deal with more than a few mobs. So to keep you and your valuables safe from those four walls, let's look at every way that we could think of to mob proof a base. And hey, the YouTube gods bet me that you can't subscribe to the channel before this creeper hits the ground. So to prove them wrong, explode that red sub button down below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Starting off, everyone knows that if you want to keep the mobs at bay, then torches are the reliable solution. Plus, they make the spawning system incredibly straightforward. If you see a dark patch, just light it up with a torch, and there you have it, the job's done. Now, sure, you could get more technical and space them out precisely using a mod like Light Overlay, but honestly, just eyeballing it is enough to keep 99.9% .9 of baddies out of your base. But maybe that's still not enough light for you. Well, in that case, we can go one step further and not just light up our house, but build a lighthouse. And by that, I mean a house out of lights. Using blocks like sea lanterns, glowstone, and redstone lamps, it is possible, albeit a bit ugly, to make a fully brightened base, which at this point you might call overkill. Though this does also give the added opportunity to turn your house into a very convincing infinity room using white maps, for whatever that's worth. But really, this solution's like light mode discord. It's functional, but a pain to look at. So if instead you're looking to cause damage to your foes, not exactly your retinas, then let's go full Darth Vader about it and surround your house with lava. Not only does a lava blanket give off plenty of light to stop potential spawns, but mobs over here can't spawn in the magma anyway, nor will they want to go near it, might I add. And while I'll fully admit that this would look a lot better in the nether, over there, the lava isn't as much of a deterrent, so it's best to keep your boiling base over here in the overworld for now. Or if you're not interested in living in or around a literal lava lounge, then let's grab a water bucket and cool off. And then another to make an infinite water pool, because at this point, it's time to make a fully functional water floor for your base. Normally, flooding your house would be something that we'd try to avoid, but here, all we need is a knee-high puddle, and that'll keep all the mobs from coming for us. And hey, get yourself some Depth Strider boots and a dolphin for grace, and this might actually help speed you up around the base. Or if you're looking for a speedy solution that doesn't devalue your property, then maybe let's just stick to slabs. Here, you can still tuck soul sand underneath for a soul speed boost, but no mobs would be able to spawn on top of the half steps. And also, it'd be hard to talk about this option without mentioning the potential savings. It's simple math, folks. By cutting our blocks in half, we literally double the return on our floors. And then, we don't even have to worry about the mobs. If you ask me, that's a win-win. But maybe you're the type that doesn't want to just decide between a full block and a half slab. But rather, you're looking for some more variation. Well, in that case, snow layers can definitely fill in those gaps. As we said, this will give you a much wider spectrum for designing a multi-layered floor. But I do have one warning. You see, snow layers will only prevent mobs from spawning when they have a thickness of 2 to 7. Just a single layer isn't going to cut it. Otherwise, the snowy tundras that you'd see would have no mobs in sight. It just doesn't make sense. But even after heeding that warning, maybe turning your base into a winter wonderland is just a bit too soft for you. Well, then I think you'll find this to be a bit more metal. By tossing together some iron and sticks and a crafting table, then you can not only have the components for a roller coaster, but also a fully functional base defense. No joke, since rails occupy the block, no mobs of any other type will spawn in them. And you can thank 1.9 for that little change, which means if you have the leftovers from an abandoned mine shaft, these rail trails might just keep you on the right side of the tracks. But really, all that mining and smelting just sounds a bit too complex. So why don't we take a step back and go back to our roots, or rather, our beet roots. That's right, these crops can offer up a whole other form of protection as soon as night falls. So if city life has been getting you down, then it might just be the time to move in on the farm, literally. And look, while sleeping on a bed of carrots might not be the most comfortable, at least you'll be able to sleep when there's no monsters nearby. But I get it, not everyone's trying to spend the night like a scarecrow. So in that case, let's get a bit more fancy and switch out the wheat grass for some feet glass. And while initially this might seem as dumb as that segue, it's hard to argue with the results. Since glass is a transparent block, no mobs will want to spawn in your desert decoration, giving you free reign for a cozy stay. And hey, with so many different colors to choose from, there's plenty of variety here if you're willing to give it a shot. But carving a desert empty is something only the most dedicated of us are willing to do. So why don't we set our shovel to the side and instead look to nature's transparent block. While sure, the underside of these tree canopies definitely give way for plenty of nighttime mobs, the top of the trunks is a lot safer. So if you've ever wanted to recreate your own version of the Hoenn region's four tree city, this might be your perfect opportunity. Because really, while building a tree house is cool, keeping it safe is all the better. But who knows, maybe while building 
hidden up in that dark forest, you grow more accustomed to the mushrooms than the trees themselves. Well, in that case, you'd be hard pressed to find more mushrooms than in a mushroom field's biome. Oh yeah, not only is there plenty of fungus among us here, but we're also completely safe from the hostile mobs as well. Over here, no creepers, skeletons, or zombies will come to ruin your day. Truly, if you're lucky enough to find the spot, then you're rewarded with some unmatched levels of safety. Which is nice, considering that it's probably going to take you a few hours in a boat just to find this. So if after all that exploring trying to find the mushroom field's biome, you just have to give up, then don't sweat it. Because actually, if you hop out of your boat and into the sea, that might also be a candidate for safety. As mentioned, water and hostile mobs don't tend to mix. And while drowned should be the exception for that, if we set up camp in a warm ocean biome, then they're out of the equation as well. So if you've got the stuff on hand to set up some conduits, then we can make this work. Or actually, while you gather up the prismarine needed for your conduits, maybe let's hang around that ocean monument. Now, I know, it doesn't seem the safest with all the guardians swimming about, but if you dry out the insides, then it actually becomes a fully mob-free zone. Truly, the way that it's coded in, only guardians should be able to spawn in the premises. But once we get rid of that water through sand or sponges, then it'll just be our domain. If you're willing to put in the time, then it's hard to say this work doesn't pay off. Or maybe that's still not enough hard work for you. After all, draining an ocean monument is a pretty common concept, so how do we get a bit more exclusive in our methods? Well, for you truly crazy homeowners, might I suggest a void base instead. You heard me right, through the help of chickens, boats, and chest minecarts, it's actually possible to make a livable base right at the bottom of the world. Now, there are some obvious downsides that come with this, but to its credit, hostile mobs aren't one of them. But at this point, we've got to start asking ourselves if we're adding more danger through the cure than the problem itself. Though, if that's the question, then nothing speaks to that more than a hostile mob switch. Whether you build one of these using withers, shulkers, or zombie villagers, the fact of the matter is, there could be a lot of unmitigated risk if things go south. And let me speak from experience, that doesn't end too pretty. But much like a nuclear reactor, while it's up and running, the benefits are clear to see. Though, as you go through the trouble of zombifying every villager necessary for the mob switch, that's sure to send a few red flags to the golems. So, as an alternative, why don't we change from adversaries to allies, and actually use them instead? Funnily enough, to get the army of iron golems that we need, we might just need to sacrifice more than a few of them to an iron farm. But the results that we get out of it could just be strong enough for a castle in the sky. Though, unfortunately, these things do not hold their own when it comes to creepers. So, to get those kind of creepy crawlies out of your base, let's switch from ferrum to feline instead. By using these, these cats will actually keep both creepers and phantoms at bay, letting you get some rest in peace without having to rest in peace. And hey, to beef up this solution, why not also enlist the help of dogs so that we can fill in the gaps not covered by the calicos? That way, these wolves will deal with the skeletons and zombies that wander in, while the cats make sure that the others don't even try. And while that sounds nice, maybe the mobs that you have on hand aren't as good at defending, but more so, diverting. Well, if you're a person with plenty of villagers and or turtle eggs to your name, then it is possible to make a bait and switch defense system. Simply have the zombies pathfind over to these helpless creatures, and you'll be able to keep them off your scent. And look, while it might seem cruel to use turtle eggs to save your hide, it is probably one of the safest outcomes for the baby turtles. I mean, at the very least, it's better than being an item in a chest. But maybe I'm completely off course, and you don't want to work with mobs of any kind. Well, shoot, we've got a solution. As Green and many others have pointed out, bamboo can make for a very solid defense against dark mobs. Because, as you can see, while Steve and Alex can make it through these gaps just fine, the monsters have a bit more trouble. And hey, at the very least, I think your pandas will much prefer this option. Plus, since bamboo grows so tall so quickly, it is easy to get a full-scale bamboo base barricade in very little time. But if all that new height that we created is just ruining your sight lines, then there might be an alternative with a smaller footprint. Just as we're able to walk between the tricky hitboxes of bamboo, if we place a nether brick fence next to a regular fence post, we get a gap wide enough for us to walk through, but the mobs will see it as a complete wall. So, whenever you want to work in your base, it's just a simple course correction, and you can leave the creepers and the skeletons in the dust. But much like their hitboxes, the nether and the plank colors don't exactly mix. So if you want something a little bit more visually consistent, then the new 1.17 updates got you covered. Here, lightning rods are actually our new candidate in the wonky hitbox technology. Just stack a few of these copper columns as tall as you'd like, and you'll be able to stroll on by while leaving your worries behind. Though I mean, for obvious reasons, you wouldn't want to go near this during a lightning storm, and hopefully you don't supercharge any of the creepers that you're trying to avoid, but if you keep this in a desert with clearer weather, he might be just fine. Although, getting all the copper for that system definitely sounds like a chore. So, for us lazy folk, maybe let's choose a wall that's easy to farm instead. And for that case, I think a carpet wall combo is a definite classic. Not only can you grab all the wool that you need from your local sheep, but the cobblestone and wood that you need for the foundation are not hard to come by either. And hey, it's hard to complain about this solution when there's so many different color choices to choose from, proving that even mob proofing looks better in red. And speaking of that, if you just want to see one of those 
16 carpet colors and nothing else, then we've also got something right up your alley. Or actually, it's underneath your alley. You see, by digging a pit six blocks deep and then filling it up with string, then we can cover up the top with carpets and walk along just fine. All the while, any mobs coming close just see the pit and it'll stop dead in their tracks. So if you're looking to give yourself the red carpet treatment and leave the bums at the door, then you're gonna need this floor. Truly, the carpet trick is a great option for stopping mobs from walking into your property, but give them the opportunity and they'll also try to jump into your base unsolicited. So to defend against that outcome, we'll just need to put them in a sticky situation. After ransacking any and all beehives that you have in the local area, simply place the honey blocks along the base's perimeter and they'll be sticky enough to keep the mobs from jumping in. We've already used these in the past to keep villagers in place for trading, so it's only fair to use them to defend those very villagers. Or if you really want to flex on the mob's inability to jump, then vines are your ideal contender. But not like this. Rather, we need the vines to be freestanding. Because even though the mobs might stand a chance at climbing these when they're pushed up against a tree, when we take that away, we're able to climb it, and they're stuck at the floor. It's definitely an effective strategy to get out of dodge and escape, but just remember to be careful. After all, if one of the skeletons that you left below shoots you off, then you're in for a bad time. So if heights are a bit too risky for you, for obvious reasons, then let's play it a bit safe and go to a crawl space base. After you flip down a trap door, mobs will find a very tough time trying to chase you down there. Especially if you happen to use snow layers in the area to give the base an even tighter squeeze. And to its credit, you're still able to do plenty of the regular base functions down there. Whether that's crafting, mining, or even fish farming. Sure, it's not the most roomy, but considering that more space normally leads to more mobs, this could be a nice trade-off. But if that claustrophobic chamber just really isn't for you, then we can cut down on our crawl time by just making a crawl door instead. To any mobs strolling up, they'll just see a wall. But as soon as we press this button, we get just enough time to crawl through the mail slot and into the other side. And after we're done, it even closes back up like nothing ever happened, making this definitely a solid way to sneak back into your village base. And since it uses buttons, only us players will have the brain power to use it. Which, on that note, if we're going to show off our redstone knowledge, I have just the idea. Well, sure, there are plenty of different redstone-powered mumbo-jumbo style safe houses out there, they're all pretty complex. And folks, while this might look complicated, it's all for show. You see, we're not as interested in what the machine does as we are in the machine itself. Since mobs can't spawn on redstone circuitry, we can make a safe base just by living in the inner workings of a redstone build. It turns out that redstone this complicated is even enough to confuse the game's spawning engine. But while it's all well and good, it might be unnecessary. After all, why would you go through all the effort to build a fully functioning redstone calculator to keep your villagers safe if just inverting the doors would do the same trick? No joke, by flipping the doors like such, when they're closed, the mobs see them as open and try to walk right in. Even if you're on the hardest difficulty, the zombies won't even try to bust these doors down. And why should they? To them, it's an open invitation. But lucky for us, our house party's got a pretty strict bouncer. And to that point, if you really want to hire a bouncer for Steve's safety, then there might be a real world option just for you. Now, there is an argument to be made that if you play in a multiplayer server, you could always just hire a bunch of pro players to keep you and your stuff safe. Because in the end, it doesn't matter how the mobs get disposed of, just as long as your health bar stays clean and pristine. So to any Bill Gates or Elon Musk types out there, this does prove that money solves a lot of problems. But if after all of that, the mobs are still coming for you, then I think we might need to kick it up a notch. This time, we're gonna try a kill switch. By setting up a couple of these pufferfish player detectors nearby and then rigging them up with stacks of TNT, we could essentially create a self-destruct sequence for the base. I mean, they won't be able to mess with your house if there's no house left to mess with. So get them in range, let them puff up, and get ready for a light show. And if that doesn't work, just try peaceful mode or something, I don't know. And with that, folks, safeguard that sub button down below and have a good one, all right?